Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at a brand new feature in Postman. It has been added in Postman version 7.2 and it's called APIs. It's about designing APIs in Postman and you probably, if you go into the Postman interface, you'll be able to see here a new tab if you have updated the latest version. And it says here APIs, beta, and then you can go ahead and create an API. I'm going to click this button, create an API. And what you're offered here is a first interface. It's a completely new interface that you haven't seen before. And the first thing that you should do is to name your API. Now, let's assume that we're working on a very simple API. I'm going to call it Cars API. And the first thing that you are asked for is to define your API. And the way we usually do it is to add a schema to our API. So server like a formal documentation that says how this API should work, what are the endpoints and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this schema and I will create a new one because I don't have a file. Now open API in version three is probably the schema that you want to use. And if you're totally new to this, I'm going to show you a very simple schema. And now I'm here at swaggerhub.com. This is a very simple schema that I have defined using OpenAPI in version three. It's called the Cars API as I have described. And I'm gonna quickly go over it so that you can understand what this schema is all about. Now the first part is just defining what kind of schema are we defining here. Some general information about the schema, for example, how is it called, a description, a version. And then we go into the most interesting part, and that is the path to our API. Now I have defined only one path, and this is the cars endpoint. And as you can see, the only method that is available here is the get method. And it's pretty simple. It just says what you should do. Uh, it defines a parameter, which is a query parameter. It's called search string. And then it says this is a possible response. It will return to 100 if everything is okay. So this is a very, very simple schema, but just to give you an idea how something like that looks like. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to Postman. Now inside Postman, I can simply paste this schema. And right from the beginning, you will see here that something is not right with this one. And yes, indeed, uh, for some reason, I cannot really understand um, Postman has decided for OpenAPI, it's going to use JSON as the format, as a file format. Actually, I think YAML is much more popular. So for that reason, you have to select YAML and then you'll not see any other errors. Great. So we can go ahead and save this. And this sort of a defines our API. It says, this is our first sort of a version of the API. And this is how it looks like. And of course, it can evolve over time. But especially if multiple parties are involved in this project, for example, you have backend developers and frontend developers, sort of with this schema, you can define, hey, we're going to have these endpoints and they're going to work more or less like this. Let's define this and then everybody can sort of work on, on that. Now, the first thing that we can do with this schema is to actually generate a Postman collection based on this specification. So right here, we'll find generate collection you will see that a new collection has been generated. Now, in order to actually see that collection, you have to go to collections and you'll see here the cars API and you'll see that there is one request. There's even one example that has been added. Everything very simple, but we have it right here and you can easily sort of see, I have defined this and this is how it looks in Postman and sort of a on one side saves you the time of creating the Postman collection once you already have the schema. Now, as you have seen here, we have defined this in version one. So what we can do here is click on show all versions and you will see that currently we are sort of in this draft version where we can make changes and they will be saved by Postman. So let's go ahead and create another version and call it version 1.0.0. Uh, I'm being masked every time I create another version if I want to carry over any elements. Uh, but don't worry about this right now. I'm going to simply uh, carry on with the schema that already exists and I'm going to create a version. 
Great, now that we have created this version, uh, we have the possibility now of tagging our collection as well. So for example, if I go now to the collection in the change log, I'll be able to see all the changes that I have did. Of course, I haven't made any changes yet, but I can add this version tag. And now I can select from the Cars API the respective version that I think this corresponds to. And I can simply add this. Now, if I'm going to develop, I'll be able to say, for example, this is the documentation that I have. And I can select the collection that holds the documentation. And now you'll see that you have the Cars API in version one, and this is the other version that we have. The same goes more or less for tests. You can add, if you have different test versions, so if you do integration tests or contract tests or any other tests that you have, you can link the same collection, of course, if it's the same collection holding those tests. If you have like different collections for different purposes, then you can link those respective collections as well. Additionally, what you can do is to define mock servers and to link that mock servers here as well. So once you have defined mock servers for your collection, you can tag the mock servers with a specific version and then you can add them here. So they will be sort of a all version together. Now, if we go back to our define tab where we can see the specification of our API and decide to make a small change, for example, instead of search string, maybe we just want to call it search. And we hit the save button. And of course, now we have made some additional changes. Now, the thing that you'll notice is that when you go back to your collection, nothing really has changed here. So the collection sort of remains the same. So you always need to take care that when you're making changes to your specifications that either you create a new version or you sort of manually do the other changes to the collection. You have all the time the possibility of generating the collection, but if you decide to replace it, you will completely replace that collection. Now, you're probably wondering where is Postman going? Uh, what exactly is the idea behind it? And actually what Postman is trying to do is trying to go into the direction where it's not only a tool where you can send some requests, but it's going to the direction where it is an integrated solution when you're working with your APIs, when you're building the APIs. So even from this initial design stage, you can do everything in Postman. And this is actually a term for that. It's called ADE, API Development Environment. And this is where Postman is going. Now, this is a beta stage and I think it's a good idea to take a look at it, but there are some issues and I'll try to point that as well. Now, the first issue I have already pointed out is that when you're making changes to your schema, the collection doesn't get updated automatically. And this is sort of a like, the importer that was originally in Postman where you can import an open API format has been sort of a refactored here and you can now generate a collection from here instead of going to import. Additionally, the editor that you see here doesn't really check that what you're building if you're working with the API, if you're working with the open API format, doesn't really check that what you're writing is really valid. So for that reason, I will highly recommend that if you go into direction, if you just want to learn how to define your APIs using the open API format, that you take a look at swaggerhub.com because every time you make a change here that, for example, I want to say here something like form, they will check here in the background and they will see, hey, there's an error. You are only allowed to use path, query, header, and cookie. Now, if I make the same change here, there's actually no warning that something has gone wrong. Additionally, it's not possible to export this new entity that we have created here. So this cars API, this isn't something that you can now export as a file and share with others. So if your sharing model is like exporting collections and making changes on that, you will not be able to benefit from that. You will have to work with team workspaces in order to share that respective API. Of course, the entire interface is just sort of a documenting and linking together all this information. But even this schema, this is not something that you will be able now to put inside the repository as it stands right now.
Additionally, when talking about versions inside the collection, uh, with this changelog and this tagging that you can make here, this is again something that is only available in Postman at this moment. So if you have tagged multiple versions of that collection and you export it as a file or you're using the Postman API to retrieve it, you can only see the latest version. You cannot see like the history of all the previous versions. You cannot run the same collection with, for example, Newman against version one and against version two. This is something that currently is only available inside Postman. So to sum everything up, I think it's a good thing to see that the Postman team is building the product and that is trying to go forward with this. Um, as it stands right now, this feature, um, I think calling it beta is not really appropriate because I think alpha would have been a better naming from this. It's still in a very, very early stage where input needs to be gathered and put back into the product. And it's definitely very good that the Postman team is bringing these changes all the time, continuously gathering feedback and trying to go into the right direction. Now, I understand in which direction is Postman going, but currently I don't see how developers and testers can really benefit from this new feature. I think it's a good thing. It's sort of a wrapping together some existing features in Postman and putting it together at this API design tool but there are still a lot of things missing to really make it a really valuable product. And right now it just bundles together collections, monitor mocks and environments and gives you an overview of what's going on there. But don't get me wrong, I love Postman, but I think this feature still requires some additional work in order to really make it valuable. Now, keep in mind, this is the first look at this new feature in Postman and maybe I don't know everything. So feel free to go ahead and experiment uh, with this new additional feature. Maybe it helps you more than it helps me currently in what I'm doing. And it's definitely uh, worth trying and especially getting familiar with Open API. If you haven't used Open API before to define your API, there's definitely a lot of things to, to learn there. And yeah, until the Postman product is maybe up to where you should have it, uh, go ahead, learn Open API, have a look at Swagger Hub, and yeah, start using it for your own APIs. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the section below. Give this video a thumbs up and see you next time at another tutorial. Bye-bye.